Uh, morning, everyone. For those that don't know me, I'm Mark Chambers. I'm a project manager on the Northern Hub and the Odsall Code. And uh, Matt Benson's our project engineer for track uh, on the same scheme. I know a lot of you in the room have either been involved in the scheme or uh, had dealings with it or certainly uh, been out to site, come, come to see us. So today we're going to give you a bit of an update on uh, what we've done so far. Uh, Matt's going to go through some of our uh, technical development on the scheme, uh, both where we've gone and where we're going to, and then I'm going to uh, run you through uh, our next steps and where we're going over the, uh, the course of 2017. So, the shot that most of you have seen, and it's probably in other people's presentations, and uh, I think it's uh, various... Uh, various uh, versions of it are in the uh, even in the brochure today so that is what it's all going to look like at the end so the hub's all about um, trying to improve connecti connectivity in and around the north so it's, it's the first time we're going to create a direct link between Manchester Victoria and Manchester P Piccadilly um, you get increased capacity along the Castlefield corridor and fundamentally reduce congestion at Manchester Piccadilly. So it's all about creating this direct link at the mid on the middle of Viaduct onto the Castlefield corridor so that in the future, when you get the train in from uh, Leeds, that you come round the back of Salford, round past the Museum of Science and Industry, down through Oxford Road and ultimately terminate at Manchester Airport where we've already put in a fourth platform as part of the overall hub scheme and strategy. Um, in terms of how we're delivering it, you've seen Northern Hub Alliance at the, fr the front end. So that's Network Rail um, working with, with our contracting partners. So we've got Skanska BAM as a, our civils contractor. We've got the SNC Alliance put with Amy and uh, Sursa delivering the track works. We've got Siemens doing the telecoms uh, signalling and um, power works. And finally, we've got Network Rail overhead line team delivering the overhead line works. So by do, doing that, we're, we're all sat, sat in one place. We're co-located down at Water Street, for those that, of you that have visited. Um, for those that don't know it, it's uh, by the Museum of Science and Industry. So everyone's in one place, working together to ultimately one goal. So this is a picture, an aerial shot taken a few years ago of what the site, site looked like. And fundamentally, the, 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 main, the main area that we're, we're developing. So in the bottom of the screen, you've got Museum of Science and Industry down here. You've got Castlefield Corridor down, down here, Odds Lane Junction at the top, and Middle Wivide down on the right hand side. Uh, Liverpool's at the far, effectively diagonally at the top right, keep on going and you get there, and Piccadilly's at the bottom left behind you. So what have we changed? The area's hi highlighted is in yellow, we've removed these sections, so we've removed the connection into the Museum of Science and Industry. We've removed a Grade 2 listed Princess Bridge, uh, down at the oh, down at the bottom here. And we've also moved the, uh, the gr uh, grade two listed cast iron girder bridge extension to the steep grade one listed Stevenson's viaduct. The areas highlighted in blue. We've started to. We've ne in fact we've now widened the, uh, that element of the coal viaduct in preparation for the the Oldsall Card structure itself. Um, and then finally. The alignment there, you can see that we sort of sketched over. That'll be the alignment that's cut the cord itself. And it, when we're finished, it'll look something like that. So, again, you can see Castlefield Viaduct where we connect in the Water Street Junction end and the Middle Viaduct where we connect in double junctions to allow us, allow us to uh, uh, get to a two track railway across the cord. So, some of our constraints, just mentioned we've got Grade 1, Grade 2 listed heritage assets all at, over our, the area. Um, we've also got a huge amount of development in that area, we, uh, John mentioned before, housing. Throughout 
throughout where you can see the Middlewood development site in the top right picture. You've got high-rise buildings all the way through there, uh, part of Salford's redevelopment plan. We've also had some significant issues, well documented in terms of court cases with uh, and been taken to the, ha to the high court in terms of how v how viable is the scheme. It's something that we obviously got Transport and Works Act for. We then then had appeals against the Transport Works and Works Act order to understand whether it was the right thing for the economy, whether it's the right thing for the country and Manchester in order to, to build the scheme w w along the trajectory and along the line um, it's taken. Ultimately, it was found that yes, the scheme had been developed in the right manner, that we had done the right things, and the High Court and the, uh, the DFT um, approved the scheme uh, along the alignment that we're now taking. Um, additional challenges, um, we've got two, two county councils uh, it, that we're working with. The River Irwell actually is the boundary between Salford and Manchester. That meant that everything we ha had to get approved in terms of planning permission had to be consistent between the two councils so that um, our core 10, or better known Rusty Steel, of the Old Car Bridge itself had to be approved by both sets of councils. So we spent weeks and weeks and, in fact, years working with both, um, both councils in order to agree the finishes, to agree our concrete finishes um, of the viaduct widenings and that doesn't even take into account the actual structural um, considerations of trying to get the new, the new viaduct and the viaduct widening extensions, which are made out of concrete, to work hand in hand with the, the Victorian brick built arches. So, in terms of what's the code about, it's not just about the viaduct. We've actually, here, here we've got some of our stages. The, the scheme's broken up into seven stages. Um, and covers the geography right from Manchester, Victoria, right through to Oxford Road. Um, the slide behind us, those in green, uh, stage A5, where we completely remodelled Manchester, Victoria West. So that was new bridges, re, uh, filling in redund uh, redundant arches that, that failed structural assessments. Uh, completely remodelling uh, the track alignment out of Manchester Victoria West to allow for uh, improved connectivity once you get off the cord in terms of track alignment uh, and also rewiring and resignalling the Manchester Victoria area as well as was completed in an 11 day blockade last Easter. We then completed a 16 day blockade this Christmas just gone uh, improving uh, the Castlefield uh, Castlefield Viaduct and Auto Lane Junction, where we've completely remodelled Auto Lane, Lane Junction, improving the alignment and also widened out the Castlefield Viaduct in preparation for the new alignment uh, that will take, take the tracks onto the cord itself. This Easter, we've got an 11 day blockade uh, uh, through Salford, uh, known as Stage A6, where we widen Middlewood Viaduct and realign the tracks through. Uh, Salford St Central Station um, in preparation for the final stage in A7 where we actually lay the tracks across the cord and, and connect up uh, in October this year. So it gives you just an indication of how big and how wide ranging the scheme is. It's not just a viaduct itself, it's about all the infrastructure around the existing viaduct and on the existing network where we completely, com completely change the way that Manchester operates. So. In terms of just some of our big stages, uh, as I said, it's split into seven stages. Uh, A1 and A3, as we refer to them, um, were all about changing the network to allow us to get better possessions and improved isolations. Stage A2, we actually uh, recontrolled Manchester North Signal Box into the Manchester Route Operating Centre. An absolutely massive and fundamental stage in terms of going towards <coughs> digital railway. So taking it out of the existing signal box and putting it onto the operating centre. Stage A5 was an 11-day uh, blockade at Manchester Victoria West, completely fundamentally changing the way that uh, the west side of Victoria operates. Stage A4, we commissioned 85 new signals in that 16-day that blockade, which is absolutely phenomenal effort from our signalling partner, as well as completely remodelling Auto Lane Junction. And as I say, 
stage A6, we've got an 11 day blockade later in Easter, and then A7, we turn on the card. So, a few photos there for what we did at, up at Manchester Victoria West. We used everything from uh, SPMTs to rolling bridges to uh, OCR's wiring train to make sure that the, uh, we maximised our possession opportunities while we were in there. And then the card itself. Offline, we've been building in a high street environment. This, uh, the, the new network arch bridge is going to be the world's first network rail, uh, sorry, network arch uh, bridge. And that sort of brings us up to, to where we are currently today. Um, Matt's going to run you through some of our uh, the technical issues and opportunities that we've taken so far. Thanks, Mark. So I'm, uh, I'm Matthew Benson. Uh, I'm the uh, track project engineer on the on the core project. Um, I've been in the in industry for 13 years, uh, five, six years in maintenance, five years in the asset management side, and then two years in projects. Been on the core project and the uh, the wider uh, Northern Hub project for the past two years, and it really is a an incredibly exciting uh, exciting time and really incredible project that's uh, that's taking place. Um, I've started one of the photos I just introduced it with is just goes to show some way of the uh, the complexities of the project the the structure behind is a uh, is a temporary cable structure the cables within there are still feeding uh, Manchester Piccadilly and and also external sources we also took the opportunity to take out the train operating companies and freight operating companies as well just to give them an idea of the the, the, the magnitude of works that are taking place um, this particular location we uh, used SPMTs to uh, install a new bridge deck and uh, replace an existing bridge deck. Some of the things I'd like to uh, briefly cover today are the, uh, the engineering timeline, so the Form A, uh, the Form B and AFCs. So just a, a quick touch on the Form A really is the, is the building blocks for the, uh, for the, for the uh, works to take place, approvals by the root asset management teams, project managers, uh, and allow the, the, the Form B and AFC, so that's where the, the detail really starts to come into the, uh, into the works. Um, like to touch upon some of the areas of improvement needed, as with all works, there are areas where things could be uh, could be better, and also highlight some of the uh, successes and challenges that we've uh, that we've had on the project, um, where we've challenged the the norm and uh, some of the innovations that we've uh, that we've gone through. So, as Mark's already highlighted, this is a, this is the general area just from a, from an OS sort of tile point of view. You can see the uh, the relatively sort of city centre location, and you've got uh, you've got Manchester Piccadilly off to the right. And then, it, obviously, you've got the, the Ashbys and Ardwick stuff for traffic coming, coming across from the, uh, the, the east of the country. Um, we, we had completed works at Manchester, Piccadilly, at Manchester Airport, which were the, uh, a new platform for uh, a new crossover and a new, new turnout, and that um, increases the, uh, the capacity at Manchester Airport, and that was one of the, uh, one of the early stages of works completed about two years ago. Um, just to quickly highlight the, the locations, uh, Manchester Victoria West remodelling works. Uh, Auto Lane Junction remodelling, completed it at, uh, at Christmas has gone. The Auto Cord and its uh, connections to the, to the existing network, uh, it's actually already showing on the, on the OS towers where things are, so you can get an idea of what the, uh, where the, the cord actually will be. And I'd like to just touch upon the, uh, the, the Museum of Science Industry, uh, the Liverpool Road um, station. So we've seen that image, and again, we've seen it in Mark's presentation, and probably seen it numerous times before, but it just goes to highlight where the museum design industry is in relation to the existing network and where the auto cord will, uh, will run through. So just moving down the track a little bit, just moves us on to one of the minor, minor P-way stages in, in, uh, in advance of the works. So although it was a simple plane line that we completed, it was quite an instrumental part of the, uh, part of the works, really from a, an advanced signalling and, uh, and an OLE basis. Um, <clears throat> The, the historic connection to the railway <coughs> was removed, um, although I think it was probably once in the last 10 years. I'll probably stand corrected if, that, uh, if that's any different. But it's just a bit of a, a, a nod just to say that we have removed the connection to, to the oldest station, uh, the oldest passenger station in the world. And it wasn't a decision taken lightly. Obviously, we had the, uh, the legal challenges and, and eventually Network Rail and Mosey uh, worked together. So, um, yeah, very straightforward, just an extract of the, um, of the design. Uh, Rerailing and rebase plating uh, on existing uh, timber sleepers uh, and ballast, uh, knowing that in 12 months' time we would be removing those assets anyway. Um, but the, the image I've got there kind of goes to show some of the the, uh, 
advanced works. <clears throat> so there's a signalling REB on the right hand side, which is probably in the forefoot of the old uh, connecting line, and then new LA, OLE gantries and uh, new signalling gantries. So moving on to uh, Manchester Victoria West remodelling. So this is an extract of the um, of the form form A uh, single line diagram, um, and it just goes some way to show uh, where the existing scissors crossover was and where we've relocated that to that unit. Uh, we also provided a, uh, a fast to slow crossover and a uh, slow to slow crossover to allow for uh, uh, train moves into Victoria to allow, allow them to access the platforms through there. Um, one one key theme that we've that we've that, that has been developed through the Form A. Uh, process was uh, maximising the distance between the S&C units, so really giving the, the maintainer an opportunity to uh, to maintain those units independently. Um, you also notice the the up fast alignment there, which um, so from the, the green dotted line to where the red dotted line is, uh, and I'll come on, I'll touch on that. So uh, just an extract from the, the form A, just detailing the uh, this is the crossover there, and the and the main to main crossovers. Um, this. The, the next section we'd like to talk about really is the, is the change of alignment on the up fast. And this was mainly uh, due to the uh, span 5B, which is generally where the, where the arrow sort of originates from. Uh, span 5B was a, a very weak structure. <coughs> and early on, the decision was taken to, uh, to move the track off the structure so that works uh, didn't need to take place. Significant works replacements didn't need to take place on span 5B. Uh, we did have to complete some other civil works as a result of the track alignment changes, um, but that got us away from uh, Span 5B. The Form B, so the actual detail, really sort of built upon the, the Form A. Um, the Form A was a, a, of a good standard that really it was just a case of detailing up the, uh, the de detailed design with, with information. Um, the works were completed in, in three stages. We completed the down slow and then the upslow, and then some of the other works in advance. Uh, and that took some of the risk out of the main blockade works from, from a trap perspective. So some of the actual photos from the Easter 2016 in installation. Um, the constrained nature site meant that we had to use a, a road crane to lift the uh, SNC panels from uh, road level up onto the, uh, onto the viaduct. You can see the, uh, the difficulty there, trying to thread uh, the panel through the OLE gantry and the, and the signaling gantry there. Uh, and that's uh, the photo of the, uh, the SSE and it's uh, in place or in, in progress. There was, a, there was significant uh, OLE works required and, uh, and, and signalling works as well. <coughs> so uh, that's, that's the unit. Uh, still work in progress, um, but, but post-installation and, and fully ballasted. Um, and a, a, little, a little note on this, this particular structure. It's a robust curb from a civil perspective. Uh, installed slightly, uh, slightly out of place, um, but because of the good working relationships that we have within the Alliance, um, we were able to actually uh, work with the, the, the track CEMs and CREs uh, and assess the, the clearances from a, from a, from a track perspective and, and tweak, tweak the track alignment very slightly just to make sure that we were, were clear of those uh, areas. So moving on to Auto Lane. Um, Auto Lane was a, a very, quite a curvy uh, junction. Uh, operationally restrictive in, in, in terms of its turnouts. Um, the single line diagram, again, just goes to show, some, show that we uh, maximise uh, where we could the distance between the SNC units, again, to, uh, to give the maintainer a, a chance of uh, maintaining those units independently without having to take uh, long, long possessions to tamp the whole junction in one go, tandem tamping, quad tamping. Uh, an extract to the form A, just again, is a uh, is a nod to the, the, the straight alignment that's been achieved on through the junction, and you can see the extent, the magnitude of changes from the, the green dotted line, which is the existing alignment, to the red uh, of, the, of the new track alignment. Uh, one of the uh, one of the knock-on effects of the uh, straightening of the junction was the was the uh, actually the, the slackening of the the uh, curves on the approach to the junction. Um, Auto Lane Bridge had a had a curve radius of approximately 190 metres, uh, so obviously very tight. Um, Difficult to maintain high high uh, rail wear rates, and um, the new design slackened that geometry off to 270 meter radius. Still a quite quite tight curve, but obviously a, a, a significant benefit from from the existing situation. Uh, that's a photo of the existing junction. So 
uh, in the distance, um, hopefully the, the image is clear, there is an uh, Oldfield Road bridge. Uh, and effectively, the whole junction has moved uh, across to the right, and then <coughs> the, align the alignment has been straightened through Oldfield Road Bridge uh, on, the, on the approach to it anyway. Form B. Just to iterate again um, that the importance of, of main maintaining uh, gradients, keeping the S&C on one gradient, so that the no changes need to take place from, uh, from a vertical perspective, and also uh, highlighting the, uh, the, the distance between the S&C units. The double junction was installed as a, as a uh, modular unit uh, to REPW standards, uh, and that gave, the, that gave the installation team a chance uh, of, of installing it within, within the stages and, and, and making the, the job a bit more buildable. And again, the detail there highlights the, the magnitude of change. So at the, at the bottom of the page is the, is the old down uh, slow alignment, and then above it, at 2501 points, is where the, the, the new track alignment was. So it was, it was quite a significant change. Um, working uh, with the designers and the, and the track bed team uh, and, and the drainage rams, we uh, came up with a, that there was a, a drainage issue was identified on site. Um, this led to quite a detailed, a detailed design, various, various iterations, but eventually the, the solution we came up with involved the use of hydro brakes and attenuation systems to minimise the impact of the drainage onto the existing drainage network. So a few of the, uh, a few of the photos from the installation. So you can see the, the track bed is quite wide. We've got a Kirov 1200 working there, uh, dropping the panels in. Uh, looking the other way, we've got road cranes delivering materials from, from the access point. We've got PEMLEM units on site as well. So it really was a lot of, a lot of plant on site doing lots of, lots of work. Uh, that's, the, uh, that's the junction post works. Um, sort of looking, uh, looking quite good. Uh, and I'd just like the, the photo here really kind of shows the, um, the level of magnitude of change. So obviously the left-hand photo is the, is the, is the previous uh, layout, and the, the right-hand photo is the, is the new layout. And you can really see the, the, uh, the, the old down slow and where the new, the new down slow alignment is, the, the significance of the, uh, the alignment change there. And really, uh, if you can tell from the photo, the, the way that the alignment has now been straightened up all the way through the junction, making that unit more maintainable. So I suppose really the, 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 the headline really is the auto cord and how the track has fitted in there. Um, the obvious challenge with the museum design industry and trying to retain that connection and, and ultimately its, its severance was, was part of the four-may development. Some of the um, issues that were encountered or, or developed during the four-may process were really the, the, the consideration of the highway environment below, uh, below where the auto cord will be and also the existing levels on the, on the uh, Middlewood and Castlewood Castlefield viaducts. Um, and the provision of a new Water Street junction and a new Earlwell Street junction across, across the way. Um, we've also had the two curves running towards the uh, Alter Lane junction. Uh, the radius, radius through those junctions, uh, through, the, uh, through the track, was circa 250 uh, metre radius. Uh, so the, there was discussions about whether these were going to be CWR or jointed track, and eventually the risk uh, went with um, CWR, uh, sorry, with, uh, with jointed track. Um, that's, that's just to give you a location of where the, the structure is. Uh, we also run through Salford Central Station, um, and new, there's an uh, long, existing long timber bridge that we replace, and I'll come on to, come on to that. Uh, some of the Form B uh, detailed design, just an extract of the new Water Street Junction, um, and the blue indicates where the arch, arch widenings take place on the viaducts. Uh, there's an extract from the BIM model there that shows the, uh, sort of the, the red colour is the existing viaducts, and the, uh, the grey is the uh, new arch extensions, and there's some of the arch extensions going in. Um, the cord itself is a, is a long steel structure um, of which a track structure interaction report has been completed to model how the structure will be behave. Um, and there's an extract there of how uh, the structure is, will tensile forces um, and we're looking at putting structural expansion switches and uh, ZLR clips on there to, uh, to alleviate some of the stresses on that bridge in terms of the, uh, the rail level. Uh, New Bailey Street, existing long timber, uh, we're actually going to use a uh, Romberg Ives solution. So these are cast monoblock um, units, uh, grouted at the bottom, uh, and then uh, built up to rail level. That will provide a, a good long-term solution for, uh, for the track. Areas of improvement, uh, do it again but better. So 
uh, basically repeatability of the installation. So we've had a few issues where there's always been a little bit wrong on the track installation. So it was really learning from those mistakes and, and, and building on that. A um, few issues with the concrete check panel curvature. Um, actually, the, the, the weight of the units and getting those units installed um, on, on the pre-curves was, was a bit of an issue. Um, and we'd looked to getting a, a multidiscipline structural investigation done. There are a few areas where we encountered shallow ballast steps that weren't previously uh, foreseen. Um, there was a lot of information done, but there were a few areas that were, were um, and they needed some improvement. And also working around axle counters. Um, the, the issues around working with, around axle counters, having to take them off, put them back on, and the operational impact if you, if you don't get that right. And then there's the ongoing maintenance as well. Uh, track maintenance, rail grinding, uh, tamping, how, how that will work. Uh, challenges to the norm. Um, we had uh, successful support on uh, critical rail temperature, 20 ESRs. So the existing line speed through the area is 25 miles an hour. So working with the delivery team and uh, the rams, we, we looked to make that CRT 20 a 25 mile an hour. without. So we minimised the operational impact of, of speed restrictions, but also the safety benefits from not having staff on site. Uh, boarding junctions incorrectly or having them, having them on site. Um, I suppose a bit of a one is, is IRJ removals following resigling. Um, the, uh, the, the challenge there is you, you, we install six hole blued IBJs across the network, so they should be fit for you know 20, well, probably 20 years, say. So when, we've, when we re signal, do we really need to remove those units? Um, generally, support for derogations throughout the track team. Uh, this is a very quick video of the BIM um, that, we've, that we've used, uh, uh, clash detection. Um, key success in tools, uh, the BIM model has been really useful. Um, and the weekly engineering meetings that we've had, so all the right people in the right places discussing, uh, discussing the issues. Um, and also uh, early engagement with the RAM and the maintainer at the 4 May stage is, is really the building blocks for, for the project. Uh, and the co as Mark's mentioned, the co-locations of the team doing the work in the integration has been a real a real success. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to quickly run through these. Underbear pads, uh, SSE, uh, Rombo Guide Solutions, uh, ZLR clips, structural expansion switches, hydro rakes, and uh, Teflon, Teflon fish plate lube is a real uh, benefit for the maintainer. Um, sorry, sound over to Mark. Uh, constant time, so <laughs> we'll uh, run through these very quickly. So, next steps I've talked about before. Uh, we've got an 11 day blockade coming up in around about uh, seven weeks. Um, we then Turn, turn the whole thing on in, uh, on the 2nd of the 10th, our final commissioning, so the tines at both ends will be uh, the ready and ready for operation. We then, from October to December this year, go through authorisation with the, the ORR and making sure that all our uh, paperwork and uh, effectively we're ready for both the T TSIs for which we've, we've got to comply with too, both energy and infrastructure uh, are in place and that we uh, we can demonstrate that we can operate a safe railway ready for timetable change in December. So, very quickly, talked about the 3D model. This is an example of where we put the 3D model into um, uh, what we call synchro. So, we map the program at Easter against the uh, against the 3D model so we can give people a demonstration of time and logistics to keep people safe and make sure people, show under pe make sure people understand the program during uh, the, blo the blockade and that runs uh, in time and, and program against the model so people can see that. Fundamentally there you can see the existing DSE lines are recovered and slewed over into the redundant platforms 3 and 4, uh, three and four uh, Salford Central Station ready for the tie-in on the, the bottom of the screen there. Uh, and then finally, we finished the cord. So um, the structure itself has now been landed in terms of the, the arches landed onto the north and south nodes uh, over the airwell. Uh, this is an example of the Tekla model, which is used uh, in order to uh, uh, fabricate uh, the steel itself. Um, and currently, we've got the arch in, and you can see the ha steel hangers that are uh, off the arch in the, the Tekla model. Uh, that's what we're uh, start installing in, uh, in the next couple of weeks, followed by uh, concrete deck and then ballast track and uh, start wiring it as well. So uh, all there is to say is thank you very much for uh, listening to us. Apologies if we've rambled on slightly. And uh, for those that have uh, been involved um, over the last six years, 
Thank you very much as well for your help, because I know there's a lot of people in the room. And uh, thank you. Thank you.